Welcome to Perfectly Planted Podcast. I am your co-host, Vesna May Shrearing. If it's your first time joining us today, welcome. We're so happy you're here with us. If you're part of the Perfectly Planted community, welcome back. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Today's conversation is so exciting. I can't wait. Daphne, how are you? Vesna I'm doing great. I appreciate you coming and joining the podcast on site from Charleston. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we're on location today. <laughs> uh, you didn't invite me to join you, but we, we can talk about that afterwards. Uh, <laughs> you will. No, we're, we're going to pick an event and we're going to go run a race and we will broadcast from on site at some point in time. I love that. But I'm doing great. And I am very excited about our guest today, too, who's actually my boss. Um, so I'd like to welcome... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Laura Marks to Perfectly Planted. Thank Laura. you, guys. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Laura, I, I said that lightly, but you are my boss. I just want to let people know Laura is the head coach at the Vegan Gym, where I am one of a growing number of unicorn health coaches. And although I've only known Laura since September, her story has just captured my heart. Mm -hmm. And which is one of the reasons I wanted to invite her as an epitome of all of the pillars of Perfectly Planted to join us for a conversation. Uh, so Laura, can you share a little bit with our audience? They may be listening, they may be viewing about some of your background regarding your journey to becoming vegan and your fitness journey? Yeah, it's a long one. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, thank you, Daphne, for the warm welcome and the, the introduction. It's a, truly an honor to be working with you and alongside of you. And uh, I, I love getting to know you as well. And thank you for listening to my story and wanting to hear me. Uh, as in, as well as letting me share it with more and more people, because that is part of my mission is to, and why I am here today is to be able to share my story and help others and give hope. Uh, so my journey started uh, when I was real young, when it comes to uh, wanting to be in veterinary medicine, I wanted to take care of animals. I wanted to really be a big part of, um, that journey, I just loved animals so much. And I always was sensitive to, uh, I didn't know this growing up, but I got sick really easily. I was sensitive to foods. Uh, and I grew up in a very rural area. We <laughs> we lived on in farm country and I grew up uh, with, an with animals, but also uh, animals fueled our bodies at that time. Uh, but I always felt like there was something wrong with it, and I had a hard time expressing that. So in middle school, I went vegetarian, or I attempted to. Uh, it was not very healthy. I, I tried my best. <laughs> with, with, and my mom really did try to support me. They, did, they, they tried, and so I was off and on uh, vegetarian, trying to figure out how to do this. And then I did uh, eventually start to really struggle with um, – with food and not knowing it until um, I had a health teacher share with me and educate our class about disordered eating. And I realized that my relationship with food was very broken. And it took me a couple weeks to go back and talk to her and let her know, I think I'm that that person. I think I'm, I struggle with the things you're talking about. And I wanted to be a weightlifter and I wanted to journey through that, and um, I loved lifting. I played basketball from the time I could walk, I think. I, I loved sports. I, if my brothers could do it, I wanted to do it better. Got into weightlifting when I was 12 um, and started competing in weightlifting my sophomore year and absolutely loved it and loved volleyball. I just I, I couldn't get enough sports, and I definitely couldn't get enough of weightlifting. I started to fall in love with the journey of getting strong for sport. And when my health teacher was talking about this, um, what a disorder, what disordered eating was and the, and the concerns for an athlete and the, that it can be common in certain athletes, I just really stepped back and go, I'm not going to get to those goals I really want if I keep doing what I'm doing, but I didn't know I was doing it. 
And um, so I, I thank her still to this day, but that's really where my journey started to unfold with um, my fight for sport as well as for my life. Um, and then as far as veganism goes, uh, I, I attempted multiple times uh, to journey through that until after treatment. So I did end up going to treatment when I was in 2004. I've been recovered since 2006. Uh, and I've been on a mission ever since. And then I found uh, my vegan journey after um, a pretty significant injury in 2010, uh, where I really decided um, a couple years after that, that it was time to just completely invest in plant-based. I did all kinds of research on healing my body, um, neuro fatigue, uh, all of that. And it just, everything led to plants, plants, plants. Um, and I just dove dove head first into it and I'm never going to look back. <laughs> so yeah, kind of a story. <laughs> that is actually very inspiring, especially from growing up in a rural area and actually eating the, you know, eating animal, but having, you know, wrestling with the idea of, okay, these are animals that I love and I care for, and they're also fueling our body, but is this the only fuel? Can And you alluded to more of uh, an eating disorder or telling that your teacher was teaching you about eating disorders. Um, I think that it can also stem from self image issues quite a bit. Um, perhaps that was yours, but I feel like today we're constantly um, comparing ourselves to everybody else's, you know, quote unquote highlight reel. But can you share a little bit more about your journey with that battle? Um, and how turning, you know, fueling your body with plant-based foods has really impacted your life in the positive way. A hundred percent. I am. Um, when I went to, when, when I finally got the help I needed, <laughs> I was, I was, I would say I'm still kind of stubborn and fiery, <laughs> but I, I, I chose to get help. Um, I chose that I didn't want to feel the way I felt. I didn't want to, I just had this, this tiny bit of light of hope and I was in a really dark place, um, super dark place. I didn't grab my cleanings. <laughs> I'll try to keep it together. <laughs> uh, I was in a, a pretty dark place um, and I knew my body was shutting down and I was, I want to bring in the animal story into this because I was working in the vet clinic at this time. And the beautiful thing about animals is that they can sense when you don't feel well. They can mm -hmm. sense when you're sick. They know. And um, there was a cat that I used to house it for <laughs> who came up to me and he was one that would just kind of like, you feed me. That's about all you do. <laughs> you feed me, you make sure I have water, I'll sleep at the end of the bed. And he would not leave me. He was by my face all the time. He was snuggling with me all the time. It was, I was super sick. I could feel it. And then I, um, there's birds are the same way. And I was at work and the birds, the one of the birds was just letting me pet him. And I'm like, this is just really strange. And what I discovered was I was having little heart attacks. I was really, really ill. Um, and I didn't realize that until I, I did go in and I just, I packed up my suitcase just in case. Um, and they admitted me and they, they knew right away within a couple hours of all my testing that my, my heart wasn't doing well. And I was an athlete. <laughs> I was an athlete and I was a coach and there's one moral value I have, and that is leading by example and doing what I say. And I felt like my humility was just not there. I was not doing what I told everybody else I should be doing. And it broke me. It, it felt like I was living two different lives and I didn't want that. And that's, you know, as far as when I went into treatment, they really didn't, they didn't encourage my plant-based lifestyle. I was vegetarian, wanting to be vegan, and they thought it was a symptom. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to trust, which was really hard. They had... I had to trust in the tools because what I was doing was hurting me and I was, I was dying slowly. And 
I needed to make the choice to take action and to lean into help and to do the best I could. And I still had a voice. I was still, you know, stubborn and sassy and spicy, but I, um, I had to trust. I had to lean into somebody else who maybe they didn't understand exactly how I was feeling, but they had the knowledge to help me get through it. And eventually I, I learned that there could have been a different way um, mm -hmm. that would have allowed me to be plant-based through that. And I would love if anybody ever wants to talk to me about that, that's in that profession, please reach out because there is, if, if you're not already incorporating that, there's different ways to be able to help people who are struggling with their relationship with food, that it's not always a symptom, that there are moral feelings. And from little on, I just knew that food made me feel sick. Um, I started to be afraid of food because it made me sick. And I know there was some body image stuff that started as well, but I don't think that my relationship with food and body were the same. Mm -hmm. I think my relationship with food was it made me feel sick. Mm -hmm. I was, I get nauseous all the time. I get headaches. And how do you express that as a little one? How do you tell your mom or dad that? And I would go to school and I would feel sick on the way, like trying not to throw up on the bus and have headaches. And it just was, it was that way a lot for me. And I'm still very sensitive to foods, mm -hmm. but when I went plant-based, whole different journey. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I don't get sick as often. Um, it's more, if I get exposed to gluten, I am sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. But, um, but as far as animal products, like I really thrive on a plant-based diet and I recover better on a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. As far as body image goes, I was, um, please feel free to interrupt me. No, no, no. That's as, exactly as, where I wanted you to go. Is I, I think you explained it. I mean, I think that it was, you know, where, <clears throat> please go on with the body image because sometimes with eating disorders, I mean, it's so complex. Not, you know, people with eating disorders have various stories and how they got there. And so I would love to, yeah, keep going with the body image. I think, um, you know, people close to me, I know it's more of that self-image as opposed to the relationship with food or the fact that food is really making them feel physically ill and trying to find those intolerances to address them where we feel as though like as kids, your body should be able to tolerate everything and that's not necessarily the case. But anyway, sorry, go ahead with the body, body image. Yours was a little different. One more thing yeah. before we let you go, Laura. I, I just want to call yeah. out for any health professionals that may be listening. One, that you're willing to talk to them. And two, that eating plant-based does not necessarily mean a restrictive eating pattern. Yeah. Because that's where people can confuse, especially with an eating disorder, that you're restricting because you want to exclude animal products. Mm -hmm. And that that is a those are two very different conversations. And I just want to make sure to highlight, one, your openness to having the conversation and sharing your experience, but two, not to make, not to feel that those two have to intersect in a way that is negative. Yeah, 100%. Thank you, Daphne. And I think it is, like you said, you can have both, <laughs> but you you really have to ask the right questions and, and allow somebody to live with what feels right in their heart and their soul. And because that makes that journey of healing harder if they're not allowed to do something that, mm -hmm. I mean, you're stepping over something moral for them. And that's, that's tough. That's a, already a battle that they're going through and then making that battle a little bit harder. Um, I do want to say this too, for anybody who's, who's struggling or walking through their healing journey. Now, I didn't know what caused it. Like this is years of reflection after treatment, years of reflection of, and learning and, and therapy and talking to my family and trying to figure out when did it start and what was I seeing? How old was I when I was doing these symptoms? I mean, this was years of conversation and, and being open about talking about it. And the more I talked about it, the more I started to heal. And that's why I, like, I continue to talk about it so it doesn't have power over my life. And I can take something that was hard and dark in my life and bring light to it and hope to other people. Uh, when it, so my counselor said to me once as I was going through it, she said, 
is it going to matter if you know what caused it in the first place? Mm. And I, I, it really doesn't. It doesn't matter what started it. What matters is that we're moving forward to heal and that we're, we're creating a good thing out of something that's hard and, mm. and taking this as an opportunity to make a difference. Mm. And when I knew it was a gift, like, I, and that's what I call it. This is a gift. Yeah. For some reason, I was, I don't think I was given it but I went through it to be and strong enough to get through it, to make it into something good. And it's an opportunity. And when we go through hard things in life, I was just telling Daphne this, we're always gonna have pains in life. We're always gonna have unknown and we have to step in with faith. And there's always gonna be hard work. And we say at the uh, at VSA or the Vegan Superhero Academy, choose your heart. Choose your heart. And my heart was to make this thing that was hard into something great and make it into something good versus going down into darkness with it. I was going to bring light to it and help others come out of that darkness and make the world a better place. Um, when it came to my body image, what I discovered, so when I look back in years from now and having conversations, I remember talking with my mom because I remember being very little. I knew the room. It was like all blue. <laughs> it was like blue carpet, blue everything. And my mom's like, Laura, you were three. We moved a lot. So she's like, Laura, you were three when we lived in that house. And I remember looking in the mirror and pinching myself at three years old. And I'm like, and I remember thinking, what three-year-old doesn't love their body? Mm -hmm. And that, that broke me, but I don't remember it ever being related to food. I know I was picky about food. Um, and I think it had to do with, I knew the relation to animal as well as I knew the relation to it not making me feel well. But when it came to my body, I had to step back and look at what I was seeing around me. And this is where I reach out to parents and not to make you feel bad or to aunts or to any of us coaches kids are watching you mm -hmm. all the time and how you talk to yourself matters <laughs> and i think about all the beautiful women i had in my life and i my mom to me was like the most beautiful thing i ever saw and when she would talk poorly of herself why would i believe she thought i was beautiful mm -hmm. Why would I think my aunts thought I was beautiful when they're constantly on a diet or weighing themselves or looking in the mirror or saying that they're they're not beautiful or they're they're heavy or whatever? And it, it was constant in our surroundings, what we were reading, what we were watching. And if the people in our life are not confident in who they are, at least speaking positively over themselves and, and falling in love with who they are to reflect and teach their 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 kiddos to fall in love with themselves. And I think of that now, I'm an auntie and I absolutely love it. And I think of that where I still have triggers. It is hard for me to wear shorts. Mm -hmm. And I, I've competed in singlets and I can do that on stage, but those sweatpants are coming on pretty quick. Uh, I don't think about it when I'm lifting heavy things, but it's been something that's been a battle for me for a long time is to wear shorts. But when my nieces are around, I wear them anyways, mm -hmm. because I don't want them to know that I have a fear and they shouldn't know as I grow and I learn and I'm growing out of that and I'm getting more confident and in stepping out of that. But I don't want my nieces to be afraid of loving their bodies and wearing shorts. They don't need to, I don't need to pass that on. And mm -hmm. as I heal and how I talk about food being fuel, I say that all the time. Food is fuel. If I want to be, if I want to be strong and athletic and, and go after life and, and fuel my brain mm -hmm. and I exercise to to be healthy, not to look a certain way. I exercise because I get to. I exercise because mm -hmm. this is my body. <laughs> it's not a have to. Mm -hmm. Laura, I mean, that's a great point. And if you're comfortable sharing, so how did the gym contribute to your healing? And how did your faith contribute to your healing? Mm. Two of the most important things to me. <laughs> 
those of you who know my vision board, um, God first, Jim second. It makes me a good human. <laughs> yeah, I am kind, much kinder, and I present myself fully if I put God first and the gym second. I feel the barbell. Well, God introduced me to the gar- barbell and my my thoughts and my opinions and my walk in life. But Olympic lifting, I started lifting and competing. I've been lifting since I was twelve. I had two older brothers who definitely introduced me to to weights and I I was addicted instantly. But I started, I had a coach who introduced me to Olympic style weightlifting as a sophomore in high school and I fell in love with it. I I couldn't get enough of it. If you if I, I you just knew I was in the gym. If I had extra time I was in the gym. And it was because I loved the feeling of being strong. It wasn't for yeah. a look. I loved the feeling of being strong and having like being able to throw things, man, it's the best feeling when you're on set. <laughs> and the, just throwing weights and lifting heavy and, and building confidence. And I loved competing in it. And that the when I heard that I am, was hurting my ability to be strong and to build muscle and to be that athlete I wanted to be, it gave me a fight. I, I, it gave me something to fight for. And I, I wanted to be an athlete. <laughs> I wanted to be a good athlete. And, but the barbell was special to me. I never wanted to have to give up lifting heavy weights and to throw weight around and to keep improving. And that just, it gave me something worth fighting for even if I couldn't see everything else around me. Um, there was a lot of grief, a lot of loss little on i've been unfortunately to a lot more funerals than i have weddings in my life from little on and it just i emotionally feel and this is where god comes into i think this is a gift this empathy this deep empathy and energy i feel from people i truly love people when i was going through my dark time i don't think i could say that i was you know figuring things out but i truly deeply (laughs) care about people and that is such a gift. And when I was little, I think I was carrying all of this, all everybody else's anxiety, everybody else's pain, everybody else's, because I wanted to fix the world <laughs> and I couldn't carry it. And as a sophomore, I went to um, a youth, uh, youth group <laughs> and I uh, was invited to uh, minister up in the cities Uh, A bunch of kids got together, teenagers, and I had a pastor ask if they could could pray over me and because I was very sick (laughs) and I was struggling and I wanted to give up. I didn't want to live. And um, I don't don't think I've ever shared this publicly before. Um, It's one of the most beautiful times. Hardest, but yeah, beautiful. And um, this pastor prayed over me. And when he was done praying, he looked at me and just this like, ah. And I was like, why are you looking at me like that? I was a teenager. (laughs) And he's like, I've never seen anything like that before. And I said, seen what? And he said, somebody lift their head. And I don't remember the prayer, but I do remember this. And he's like, I never saw somebody lift their head up like that. And I said, I thought you did that because all I felt was this hand under my chin lifts my head up because I was looking down a lot during that time. And I felt that ever since then, it was like that light, that spark, that feeling that I wasn't alone, that became my warrior, that became my, yeah, that became everything to me. (laughs) to keep going and when i was right before i went into treatment so it was years later unfortunately i had um a bad experience with a doctor and i i know that that there's amazing doctors out there and that but it's another lesson is this doctor told me that that i was depressed and i didn't have an eating disorder and i after that man, my eating disorder took off because I didn't have a problem. (laughs) It wasn't me, you know? And so it 
it really wasn't great advice. Um, and, but years later I did seek help again and went into treatment at 24. And I remember telling my mom, I'm like, I don't feel God anymore. I don't feel that touch and I want it back. And I just had a spark of hope still. And I just kind of feel like, um, this isn't very vegan, but it was like a, a fishing line that was wheeling me in and I would be swimming as far away from the boat, but something just kept drawing me in. And I remember thinking, if we think about healing, the most painful part is when you're almost there. Mm -hmm. And so I think of that fish coming out of the water with this hook in its mouth needing to be let go. And I needed somebody to get me out into the boat to be able to take the hook off. Mm -hmm. And that was really that fight was just, just let go, stop trying to control it all, listen, mm -hmm. you start to heal, start to take the tools, um, trust, have faith. And then it was my mission every day to get out of bed and make things shake. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I just, I had, I had a story to tell and people to help and Ever since then, I just, I haven't stopped. <laughs> I haven't stopped. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Laura, that's so inspiring. And I think that that, you know, that feeling is your why and your empathy towards other people and your intention, you know, of helping others and getting your message across through, you know, what was a hard a hard journey, you know, and leaning into the hard. Wow, you're amazing. Um, thank you for sharing that. I do want to lighten it up just a little bit because <laughs> there are, when I talk about being more plant-based um, and people know I work out as well because I have the best fitness trainer on the planet. Um, <laughs> Everybody's like, well, where do you get your protein? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, as a power lifter, somebody who has been in into it for so long as a vegetarian, as a vegan, um, you know, how how do we break the myths and barriers of of that? And what do you tell the people that you help with kind of shifting their thought on needing to get that muscle mass through lean animal protein now is actually in the veggies that we can grow in our own garden. Mm. Yeah, I talk a lot about inflammation and recovery because the key to uh, being able to gain muscles to recover quickly, I always say the magic is in the recovery. So mm. sleep, hydration, fueling your body, um, micronutrients, getting the inflammation out of your body as quickly as possible because the faster you can recover, the harder you can hit the gym every day to grow muscle. And we need to recover for it to grow. We're tearing it down to build it back up. So if we're not able to train hard more often, we're going to struggle to put on that muscle. And that food is fuel. We need a lot of it. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of, of, of fuel to train at that intensity, in my opinion. Uh, so there's, I always say when I, I worked with, with youth for many, many years as well, 20 years, my heart definitely loves, loves the kids too. Uh, and I used to just say, how about we just start with eliminating dairy. Like, mm -hmm. let's see, like, you'll see a difference instantly in the inflammation of your body and the recovery. So let's try a pea protein if they're doing whey. Let's, let's go towards almond milk, oat milk, uh, mm -hmm. you know, let's try it and, and see how you feel. Next thing I want you to do is because I say, I don't tell them like completely, like they're dependent mm -hmm. upon their parents too. So how can we add in more plant protein so that you don't have to eat as much animal protein, which mm -hmm. is going to help you digest more. You're going to sleep better. Your endurance is going to feel different. Uh, running up and down the basketball court is going to feel different. Uh, so how do we how do we add in more uh, with other things you're eating? Can we add in more uh, lentils and beans as a carbohydrate source? Can all your carbs have protein in them? So can we eat oatmeal in the morning? Can we, how do we add in more protein from plants? Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking we're taking something away, let's add, let's add more. 
um, and get, so we're talking about uh, broccoli and I just ask, cause I'm like, yeah, what do you think of vegetables? <laughs> you know, yeah. will you eat them? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a great question so for kids. <laughs> <laughs> because you know oftentimes the answer is like, no, or I but, eat the, you know, yeah. Yeah, the why behind wisdom, I always say wisdom and the why is so critical for somebody to take steps forward. Mm -hmm. You can't just, I, I think all coaches need to coach teenagers because you're going to learn this lesson, especially like, I feel like I had hundreds of my own kids. I didn't have kids of my own, but I had hundreds that I adopted. But there, are, I think of this, like, you can't just tell somebody what to do. They're going to be like, I'm going to do the complete yeah. opposite, <laughs> you know, like, like they, they need to be excited and understand the why and have the wisdom behind it. Mm -hmm. So when I explain why we're doing this and what it's going to do for their vertical, what it's going to do for their takeoff, what it's going to do mm -hmm. for their recovery, what it's going to do to build muscle faster and that we don't want to restrict in high school. Why? Because this is the best time to be building muscle. Your yeah. hormones are like, Yes. yes, feed me, grow. They like, I mean, they yes. come in in the summertime and they grab the barbell and two weeks later, I'm like, whoa, 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 we need to, we, you grew. <laughs> it's, like, it's like watching a great day and trying to walk up and down stairs two weeks, every two weeks, right? They, they just grow really quickly and it might be their legs and the next week it's their arms. A little sunshine and some greens does amazing things to an athlete. So I just, I, I really try to encourage what it was going to do for their performance. Let's try it and let me know how you feel. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, if, if it one ups you from, from your opponent mm -hmm. and yeah, you just, it's, it's saying, I see you're strong. I see that you want this really bad. I'm not going to tell a lifter squat deeper without telling them how or why, because if I tell them you need to go lighter, squat deeper, they're going to, I think I'm a jerk. <laughs> so I'm going to step back and go, I can make you jump higher and squat heavier. Are you interested? Mm -hmm. Let's break down the plates. Let's take it down. I want to move your feet around a little bit. You're very, very strong, but I know I can make you stronger. And I know I can affect your strength so much that your vertical improves that you can out rebound. And they're like intrigued. So they're not afraid to break down the weight. I'm not telling them they're not strong enough. I'm telling them I don't want them to plateau. Mm -hmm. I want you to get stronger and I want you to be the best you possibly can. Can mm -hmm. I help you? Mm -hmm. And I think approaching nutrition is exactly the same way. I'm not seeking perfection, but how do we slowly start to implement something that's going to make you stronger, faster, feel good, recover, be one up on your opponent? Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're willing to try. Mm -hmm. And I would have parents come to me and be like, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Basketball coaches started coming to the football. Like, it just, it was fun for me to see that. Yeah. 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 So protein, I love that. easy. <laughs> I think what people realize is it's a lot easier uh, than they think it is once you start fe feeding them and giving them meal plans and showing them how to start incorporating mm -hmm. more protein in, then they realize, wow, I didn't realize I could get that much protein in. Yeah. Uh, and it tastes and good. Easy it really is. And it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it's yes. consistently tasting good. I just, sorry, I just want to put, I mean, you know, you know how many times have you had something like a piece of, sorry, I'll go back to the steak eating days and you have a steak and it's like one steak doesn't taste the same as the other because they came from two different cows and they were, who were treated and, you know, loaded up with antibiotics or whatever it may be, even if it's organic, it's not the same. But I do know that my bag of lentils and my, you know, my black beans are going to taste the same, you know, and cost a hell of a lot less. <laughs> sure. And right. there's just something about fresh food. Yeah. It's just like the flavor that comes from something that is fresh. And there is something that an energy about you too, from eating plants that, I mean, it's just for my soul of being like, I don't have to harm anything. Mm -hmm to help improve my life. Mm -hmm. I don't have to harm others or animals or to help me be a better person or to be a better athlete or to be, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't need to hurt anything. And there's something peaceful about that. Yes, agreed. Yeah. So Laura, 
We talk about this a lot, leading by example. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share, I mean, so many people look up to you and I know that you strive to lead by example. And one of the things we frequently asked guests on the podcast are, what does the day in the life of Laura Marks look like? How are you leading by example to show others what life as a strong vegan woman warrior can be like? Yeah. And I'm not, I, I, perfection doesn't exist, but exactly. chasing after, yeah. chasing after your best self does. And one of the key points is reflection. And I, I talk about being able to sit with myself and be honest and, the, and talking about learning forgiveness, I really had to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. I had to really forgive myself for how I behaved, how I how I treated other people people as I was going through things, but how I treated my own body. I was beating myself up for putting myself through something that I like, that I didn't always have full control over. And what mattered was being able to forgive myself and to seek my true self and and move forward in that. And so the day, my my day, and it, it moves around. If if you guys know me, my Google Calendar is like my power list. <laughs> I highly recommend having a power list to keep your priorities and your. I would say through the core values. What who do you want to be? Mm -hmm. What kind of human do you want to be? And what core values does that take to be there? And then are your pri pri priorities aligned with those core values? Are your goals aligned with your core values? And are your priorities getting you to your goals? Mm -hmm. Do you know what your top three to five things are that you value the most in life? And are they on your Google calendar? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's every day for all of them, but your priorities should be time blocked. And I always, I always tell the team, I'm like, please, please do not schedule anything in the yellow because that's my training time. And if, if that will upset me, my training time gets disturbed because I'm a, I work really hard and move things around to make sure that I can structure that, get up really early, maybe work a late night so that I can have that time because it's super valuable to me and to my goals and, and just who I want to be and my devotional time. So my I, my top things that have to be on my calendar is really I try to wake up and have devotion time. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen right away in the morning, I move it and make sure it does happen. Uh, my training time ebbs and flows with life, just like all of us, our priorities can shift. So sometimes work is <laughs> above my training and sometimes training is above my work. But I make sure that I'm kind to myself as I process what needs to be the priority and why. And I step back if it's starting to take the side bench a little or it's seated on a, uh, too far to the side, I can feel it. And that daily reflection isn't to beat myself up. My weekly reflection, my monthly reflection, I reflect a lot. It's to make sure I'm still in line. I'm still on my roadmap. I'm still mm -hmm. going towards my goals. I'm still keeping my core values. Uh, so really what I do is that have, I try to put God first in my life. Second is my training. They're my number one. So they're the first thing that gets done. So it doesn't get skipped. That's the goal anyways. I'm not going to say I'm always on top of my training in the morning, but I am work. It's reshifted and my Google calendar is pretty again, and that's happening. Uh, and then it's really, I work hard. Uh, I feel like you work hard, work smart, try to be focused, try to be as efficient as possible, move things around as you learn what that is. I get to coach uh, and mentor coaches as well as athletes. Um, I love, I meet, I work with some of the best people. I get to work for uh, Leif and Anders Arneson and they're amazing bosses for me and have given me the space to share my story and help people and do what I'm passionate about. Um, so I, I get to teach, I get to, um, be a part of them. And then at the end of the night, I have a new pup. So we go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love to hike, uh, if I can on the weekends, read. Um, but really I, I'm passionate about my life's work. Um, so normally I've had to learn that relationships have to fold into my, my life's work. 
Um, and I'm okay with that. That might not be everybody's priorities, but I feel like I was put here for a mission and those that really know me and are part of my tribe, I look over and they're always still there, even if I'm going a hundred miles an hour towards something bigger. Yeah. So you definitely kind of sound life. like, yeah, <laughs> you sound like you have a very full plate, <laughs> which is, but it's such uh, a rewarding, it sounds extremely mm -hmm. rewarding. And I love that you take time to reflect, mm -hmm. even as busy as we are, to just keep that as a priority as well. We talk about, and on this podcast, we ask some of our guests to share a day in the life, mainly of what they eat, because mm. oftentimes I personally, I know Daphne probably does too. We like to share, you know, some recipes or at least get some idea. would love to hear what's the day in the life of what you eat, Laura Marks. <laughs> <laughs> as, as Daphne knows, I, I've had an addiction to, but I've fallen off of this addiction, which is good. But I, I loved monk pack cookies for the longest time, guys. I love chocolate. Like yeah. I love chocolate and I love coffee. And, uh, but I do. I, I, I believe that those are gifts too. I just, and I, I don't believe there's bad food. I believe there's good food and better food. And better food is more micronutrient dense. <laughs> it has a lot more nutrients and heals our body faster. And I think there's a place for all of it. And we can incorporate all of it into our life and i am not one to restrict or say something that i can't have something but how do i work it into my goals how do i make sure it's in a healthy variation uh, i like simple especially now i do love to cook i i love making really fresh chopped herbs um, lots of soups and stews and things like that but with in the way my life is now, I eat uh, oatmeal is probably my favorite thing. It always has been from little on. I love oats. Um, so I would eat oatmeal for every meal of the day, and I have. <laughs> and I, oh, my mom just is saying hi. Aww. I love you, mom. Thank you. Uh, my biggest cheerleader right there. I, I. So from there, I love tempeh. I never did when I first started eating it, to be honest. Same with tofu. First time I made tofu, I was like, how do people eat this? Because I made it totally <laughs> wrong. So just, just make sure that like you you have somebody to teach you how yeah. to make it. And um, but the air fryer was a big game changer for me. But learning uh, how to, I love tempeh now. I, I put it in everything with some steamed vegetables really fast. I like soups, stews things that are really easy and convenient. Um, if I don't have foods ready, I could live off of chips and guacamole. So I need to make sure that that I do have a lot of vegetables and things that are available. Um, I love to juice. I've I been juicing recently. It's probably, I would honestly, because of my life, I eat because I want to feel my body, <laughs> but I don't really eat for an enjoyment. Um, that's just me. I, it's not that I don't enjoy it and I sit and I want to be grateful for my food and know that it's fueling my body, but I could just drink my food all day. Um, I just, I sometimes need people to remind me, like set timers because of the busyness of our day, but I, yeah, I really, if somebody feeds me, I'm really happy. <laughs> Uh, I don't have to to cook right now, but yeah, I keep it super simple. Lots of steamed veggies and uh, oatmeal. And if I know you're talking about uh, a little bit of like these plant substitutes, even um, daring chicken is like, I have to convince myself that it's Amazing. plants. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, this is a plant. This is a plant. Yeah. <laughs> I have to like tell myself. So anybody who's who's looking for um, that that flavor, um, it's okay to, to, it's not, we don't wanna harm the animals just because you like the flavor. <laughs> uh, you can flavor your foods and enjoy the foods and it's plants and to, you know, it's okay <laughs> to do that. So yeah, I like simple. <laughs> yes, we you, all do. You must not get hangry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> reminded uh, me. Maybe you don't get hangry. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, I, I never need to be reminded to eat. I just need to eat or I get angry. <laughs> I do. But that's why when I travel, my key is always know um, 
which restaurants you can eat at. Yeah. Um, always pack snacks. I carry food with me everywhere I go, my gym bag. I actually have to eat halfway through training. And <laughs> so I am intra no matter what. I just can't overeat if I'm going to be doing a lot of jumping around. But I, by the time I get halfway through my training session, I'm eating. So I always have food with me, um, dates, things like that too. I, I need to eat constantly throughout the day. I'm more of a grazer. Okay. But it, when I'm depleting, you'll start to, oh, so you'll, you people are like, yeah, Either. people are like, Laura, Laura eat this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, am I at that point? They're like, yes, you are. <laughs> And I, I'm very good about not getting upset when somebody's like, you need to eat. I don't take it personally. I'm very unoffended because I don't, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to come across like crabby and healthy. And I, it's not that I don't like to eat. <laughs> so, yeah. So Laura, I know that um, with Vesame being on site, I want to make sure I respect her commitment to her gal pals, but to the, <laughs> Two things. One. <laughs> That's for your mom. Mom knows best. Mom knows best She's saying a, you are re you really are angry when you're hungry. So <laughs> and, I think I've seen a little bit of the extra feistiness. Yes. If if I haven't eaten, if somebody messes with my workout and if I'm tired, three combinations we never want to yeah, see. Well, I think that makes you human, so that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's right. actually superhuman, but yeah, oh, <laughs> we, we always wrap. So two things I would, I would like to invite you to join us again, because I think we could easily talk for several hours. We'd love to hear your thoughts yeah. on um, women as they become of a certain age mm -hmm. and the whole concept around gaining muscle in your forties and fifties and beyond. Um, I think the next time we talk, we'd love to hear about your book. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the one in process. Yes. But as yeah. we wrap up today, we started Perfectly Planted because we want to plant seeds of empowerment. What can you share with those listening or watching? Just your words of empowerment, energy, encouragement, that we, you can leave with our audience today. Never give up, <laughs> never give up. Um, the reason I think weightlifting taught me life is that the gym teaches us life. Move your body, doesn't have to look a certain way, just move, go for a walk, um, start to fall in love with your body, start to listen to it. Your body's going to fight for you more than anything or anybody ever will. It loves you. Never forget your body loves you. And the reason that it feels pain is because it's fighting for you, not against you. Um, to, to be its ally, to be its best friend, start to have a relationship with your body by fueling it, sleeping, nourishing it with plants, um, moving it. Even if it's starting by going for a walk, you don't have to start with weights, just go for a walk. I don't even like the word just go for a walk. It's, mm. it's impactful. It's so important to move our bodies. Um, really build community in your life. Um, we tend to push people away when we need them the most. <laughs> trust in the process, trust in the process, let people in, um, you know, <laughs> surround yourself with your tribe. The right people will stay, the wrong people will go. Um, as you fight for yourself and what you believe in. Um, don't give up on who you are and who you want to be. Um, the world speaks a lot over us and we need to listen to our bodies, listen to our hearts, listen to our passion and who we truly wanna be as good humans. You go after that, the right people will surround you. And again, it's okay if those others don't stay, they didn't belong. <laughs> Last one, date yourself. I've been saying that a lot lately. Fall in love with you deep down. Who are you? What makes you tick? Get to know that person. Fall in love with her because that all of those things are going to take, take off in your life and you're going to find passion and purpose. And our pains, our hurts are really the things that our light shine through the most. Our brokenness is beautiful. Our scars are beautiful. And we have a choice to make them shine. All the pain, all the hurt, is our choice to make that into something good or we can pull it down into darkness or and let it win and become victims 
even if it was things that were not of our choosing and it wasn't right, how do we make those things into something good so somebody else can sh shine light and walk tall and make our world a better place? That we can do it together and that being together does not mean you're weak or, or asking for help does not make you less of. It gives you an army of people so you can charge after your life. It's still yours. It's your life. You're still responsible to take action, but you can have an army of people with you to get you there faster. Ask for help. Lean into people. I, I, it will give you that power and speak your truth. Speak things out loud. Do not feel shame or vulnerable. I know that, like, be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. And the more you speak the truth, even those scary things you don't want to tell people about, they will lose power the more you talk them out loud. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You are amazing. Your mom, mom is knows right. Thank you so much for being Thank with you us today. I, I, I do yeah. think that we would love you to come back. I feel like we could talk for another two, three hours, half a day, two day retreat. I mean, you're amazing. <laughs> yes. And Thank I'm jealous you. that Daphne gets to, to work back. with you. <laughs> <laughs> That. I guess we're gonna have to have a girls weekend with well, I'll come to your girls weekend. Yes. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, yeah, I would love it too. Thank you guys so much and for letting me share my my voice, my story, my light. Um, the more people I just feel like there's always somebody out there that needs to hear it. And agree. if you're out there talking to you today. Yeah. And Laura, if for those people out there that may need someone like you? Is there a way they can reach you? Yeah, the best place to really find me right now <laughs> is through the vegangym.com um, under coaches, uh, LM Get Fit on Instagram. Um, you can message me. I'd be happy to visit with you and talk with you. So LM Get Fit um, for Instagram, Facebook as well, Laura Marks. Um, but the vegan gym is really my, that's where I kind of spend most of my days. So uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, Laura at the, uh, Laura at the vegan G or Laura at the vegan gym, gmail.com is my email. Uh, so please feel free to reach out. I, and I would love to share tools or um, especially again, I love to definitely said with healthcare providers I really have a heart to to share maybe how we could do things maybe a little differently or have a different approach from somebody who's walked through it, um, not just the science of it, um, but really somebody who's walked through it. And, and I don't know all the answers and we all walk differently through it. But if there is any tools or tip, trip, uh, you know, tips and tricks that um, how we speak to somebody that's going through it and parents, how we speak to parents that you're not alone and your kids love you. Um, my mom can contest this, like sometimes we're the hardest on the people that love us the most. Don't give up on them. Keep telling them you love them. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Sorry. You, are, <laughs> you are amazing. And we can't wait to have you back on the show. Can't wait to be back. <laughs> Thank you guys. Let's talk about building muscle and, and getting strong in the forties and fifties and sixties and life lifelong. Well, I won't cry so much. <laughs> <laughs> tears are good. They're happy they tears. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye.